most wonderful full blessings for them may thank they you. become great blessing givers yes thank you bhagavan yes. our diksha giver maduri are going to mm. to tell the question ask the questions okay bhagavan okay perfect Namaste Bhagavan. Yes. Mm. Why does it feel so difficult to set the relationships right with one's own family? It's karma. Could you tell us something about family and collective karma and what to do about it? Yes. This problem of a relationship must be handled at three levels at the first level you could use the teachings now very often we have bad relationships because we have been conditioned wrongly and we do not have certain insights so the teaching would help you there for example the teaching says to have good relationship start with yourself not with the other see who you are accept yourself as you are and love yourself as you are when this happens very naturally the other person would see you as you are would accept you as you are would love you as you are i'll give you an example for this <clears throat> some time ago a couple came to meet us and they had very bad relationship so the lady said this man is a drunkard and i cannot live with him and the man said she is a flirt and i cannot live with her that was the problem so we told them look here we do not work on the other we work on one self so we took up the case of the flirt and we said look we are not going to transform him who is a drunkard we are going to transform you so what you should do is see look into yourself as to why you are a flirt first see that having seen that accept that yes i am a flirt accept it once you accept it you will start loving yourself yes i am a flirt this is what i am and you fall in love with yourself now when this happens very naturally we are actually working with her she began to see that man as he is as to why he is behaving the way he is behaving she accepted him as he is and she loved him as he is she did not ask that he must give up drinking she because she accepted herself and fell in love with herself she accepted him and loved him that happened to her the drunkard on the other hand he was looking into himself he saw why he was drinking that he is a drunkard he accepted that and he fell in love with himself once he did that he could also accept her as a flirt and accept and love her also now we did not change the flirt into something else nor the drunkard into something else they accepted themselves therefore they could accept each other but something strange happened after that after that she ceased to be a flirt and he ceased to be a drunkard but our object was only in helping them to accept themselves and love themselves so teaching can help like that the other thing is in relationships we build up images suppose uh, you get married you start building up images about your wife and the wife about the husband it can happen between any pe- any two people thereafter the images start relating and you stop experiencing the person then also relationship dies so in many many ways teachings can help you but that is still only the first level sometimes whatever you might do the mind gets stuck you will be playing the record again and again and again for 20 years you will be repeating the same thing without any change that also destroys the relationship you will say 10 years ago you did this 20 years ago you did this the record goes on and on and on to stop that you must give a powerful diksha which can shift the mind into another dimension the diksha comes into play and helps you now that also may not work always in which case you must have to go into karma karma would mean what happened at the moment of conception what were your mother's thoughts when you were being carried in the womb what happened in the womb 
and how exactly you were delivered the first six hours after delivery and sometimes you might have to go into past lives. So at that level, we can solve any problem. So first you start applying the teaching, next you try Diksha. If the teaching is solved, fine. Otherwise use Diksha. If that does not work, then move on to find out karma. For karma, all that you must do is, you must relax well. Move into the hypnagogic state, the state between waking and sleep. Move into that state, take a blessing from the Sri Murthy and say, please Amma Bhagwan, show me where the problem is. We will rewind the tape and we'll exactly show you what went wrong where. We'll pinpoint the problem that is your karma and then we'll rework it. Once we rework it, the entire thing will start off in just 24 hours. So that is how you have to handle the problem of relationship. Step by step you have got to move. So now I move on to the in the forthcoming Skypes, I'll go much deeper into this. Now we'll go for short answers. I'll move for the second question now. Please. Some people, when trying to experience the pain, it seems that are only analyzing it, not experiencing it. How to sit with the problem without analysis being triggered? What should we do to get out of the mind and go deeper inside the heart? Yes. <clears throat> See, the problem with uh, humanity and especially modern civilization is we have stopped experiencing things. We hardly experience anything, leave alone suffering. Nothing is being experienced. When you drink a glass of water, you are not experiencing it. The mind is still working. You think of what happened yesterday, what's going to happen tomorrow. You are worrying about something or enjoying something, but not experiencing the drinking of the glass of water. While you eat, you, you do not experience what you are eating. When you brush your teeth, you do not experience what is going on. So, at every level, you have stopped experiencing reality. So, what we must do is, we must start with basic fundamental things like sitting for some time every day, watching the body breathe. It's a marvelous experience. You must watch the body breathe. You should go for walks, be intensely aware of your walk, see what all the body is doing. And then your food. Start with external things and physical things. This can go on for about 21 days. Then slowly move into the inner world. There, first of all, Try to see what is really going on. See, what you call a problem is only a created problem. The real problem is deep inside, which you refuse to see. But if you are to practice inner integrity, you will see what is going on. You will discover a strange world inside you. It's a horrifying, terrible world. It requires a lot of courage to see who you really are, not condemning it, not judging it, not giving explanations. Now, once you do that, Thereafter, when pain comes, you will be able to experience that pain. And the strangest thing is, as you really experience it, that is, the mind will try to escape. It will try to condemn, it will try to judge, it will give explanations, it will run after pleasure, or suddenly it will jump onto some other thought, it will try to escape you. If you watch it escaping, if you've done all the previous practices, and if you watch it experiencing, you will suddenly discover that you are experiencing suffering. And in moments you'll see it converts itself into joy. Something very amazing happens. It looks difficult, but it is not really difficult. If you start with the physical experiences and inner integrity, it becomes quite easy. Thousands of people have done this all over the world. And I'll give you a special blessing whereby it will become very, very easy for you. That's the answer for the second question. So now shall we move to the third question? Beloved Bhagavan, we miss Amma. Could you please tell us how she feels about all this process? We feel her presence. We are used to contact her by thought, by heart. And now you are so human, so close and available for us. And she remains not available by video. Could you tell us something about her? Yes. 
the recent events to some extent have pained me and also Amma, but uh, our pain is not personal. We do not have anything as personal pain. Our pain is only that uh, the work is getting affected, things are getting delayed. That is our pain. So Amma and I both went through that pain. We are now free of the pain. Amma is very, very happy that we are now free to interact with the whole world and that we are pushing things through very, very fast, that we will make up for lost time. She is very, very happy. And as we move into longer meditations, right now we are only preparing you. Probably next month or in uh, February, we will be going to deeper meditations to lift your consciousness powerfully. At that time, she will join me. Together, we will be working with you. Then you will be able to see her on the video very, very soon. So full blessings to you. Oh, thank you, Bhagavan. Send please our love to Emma. So, I will communicate. So shall we now go for a three-minute meditation? Yes, Bhagavan. Thank you very much. And please yes. give your blessing to the new Diksha givers and receive our I love. I will give them. I love them all. I give them a strong blessing. <clears throat> Love you all. Love Bhaskarji. Thank you all. We love Thank you. you. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Namaste Bhagavan. Namaste Bhagavan. Yes. Love you all. So, Marco, shall we start now? The first question. Yes, Bhagavan. We realize that we return from East. When we return from oneness in India, we are in a state of grace. Even some people are in a state of enlightenment. But over time, the power goes down. And so we feel like before, despite of the meditation and sadhana, we cannot 
to reach the state of awareness we had, how can we sustain this state for a long period of time, Bhagavan? Quando nós, quando nós formos à Índia e quando regressamos, nós alcançamos um estado de iluminação, um estado de graça muito grande. E, e depois do retorno, quando mesmo fazendo sadhanas, as meditações, parece que nós perdemos aquele estado e não conseguimos mais regressar àquele estado que estávamos quando regressamos da Índia. Então, o que nós podemos fazer para voltar àquele estado, para manter aquele estado de consciência. Yes. So we should be able to get into a permanent state in the year 2012. <coughs> Such are those people who have no worldly desires, who do not have a worldly life, who are detached, would be able to get into that state even now. But since we are basically worldly people living in the thick of the world, We need the energies of 2012 to enter into a permanent state. Not only that, before 2012, we need to understand more things and we must do some sadhanas. <clears throat> My talking to you is level 3, where I'll be giving you more teachings and guiding you and also meditating along with you. Besides this, you must now slowly start practicing inner integrity. After a year or so, of practicing inner integrity, you must also move on to external integrity. These two are very important sadhanas in which I will be guiding you. Besides, I will be also blessing you and meditating along with you. As we do this, we will be growing rapidly and in the year 2012, we should be able to enter into permanently altered states. Now you can translate. Bom, é que nós precisamos uh, das energias do ano de 2012 para manter aquele estado. Uh, as pessoas que forem, neste momento, uh, desapegadas e não estiverem uh, com, com pensamentos uh, focados no mundo, por assim dizer, poderiam voltar àquele estado agora. Porém, Uh, para realmente sustentar esse estado de consciência ao qual uh, nós nos referimos, apenas uh, nós precisamos das energias de 2012. E que em 2012, então, as energias que estarão acontecendo, elas uh, vão permitir, vão facilitar esse tipo de manutenção de estado de consciência. Que uh, ao conversar com, 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 conosco aqui agora, esse é o nível 3 e ao conduzir esse tipo de, de processo aqui, também nos auxilia a regressar àquele estado de consciência. Uh, em termos de sadhana, uh, a prática da, da integridade interior é um sadhana que devemos uh, praticar bastante. E depois de mais ou menos um ano praticando esse sadhana da integridade interior, nós estaremos prontos para começar a ter integridade exterior. E aí nos prepararmos melhor para o ano, para as energias de 2012. Yes. Shall we move on to the second question? Okay. Okay. Second question, Our mind has little throughout our lives. To awaken, we must free ourselves from the mind. But how can we free ourselves from this mind, which is in charge? Yes, would you translate the question? Uh, para... Eu não escutei bem a pergunta. Não, sim, mas as palavras. Bom, é, em termos gerais, a pergunta tem a ver com a, com a mente e é, que nós aprendemos que para nos estarmos em unidade, para nos, para nos elevarmos, nós precisamos estar é, livres da mente. Mas como é que nós podemos nos livrar da mente se nós vivemos na mente, se nós vivemos aqui no mundo? Que ela está no controle. 
Yes, yes please. The first thing to realize is, it is not your mind or somebody's mind, it is the human mind. We think it is our mind, well it is not really so. That's why we call it the one mind. All mind, whosoever's mind it is, that one mind has fear at its center. Fear is the core of the mind. Not only that, mind is nothing but the flow of thought from the past to the present into the future. This is what the mind does. And mind has got jealousy, anger, envy, lust, desire, all these things are the qualities of the mind. No matter whose mind it is, they have the same qualities. So the first thing is to realize that all mind is only one mind. Let us say you have tuberculosis, you cannot say this is my tuberculosis or her tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is tuberculosis. So the mind is the mind. There is not your mind or his mind or her mind. There is just the one mind with those qualities. This we must first realize. Next we must realize that this mind is very, very ancient. It is as old as man is. It does not change at all. The brain itself has changed very little and the human mind has virtually not changed. So the ancient man had fear of the tiger or the lion or something. And modern man has fear of the share market of his job or losing his girlfriend. So whatever it is, it's the same thing. The ancient man desired for a spear, you desire for a car or for a house or some such thing. So it's the very same mind, only the object of fear or object of desire has changed. So you must realize this is an ancient mind. Not only is it the one mind, it's also the ancient mind. Like now sugar has some qualities, like it tastes sweet, specific gravity is something, its specific heat is something. Now if you take salt, it has its own taste and its specific gravity is something, its specific heat is something. Those are the qualities of salt, those are the qualities of sugar. Sugar you cannot make it into salt, nor salt into sugar. Similarly, these are the qualities of the mind as designed by nature, as designed by your brain. There is nothing you could do about it. When it strikes you like a ton of bricks, that it is impossible to change the mind. It must really strike you, not intellectually, not even as an insight, but actually you must see that the mind cannot be changed. It was, it is, and will be the same. Maybe when the brain changes tomorrow, it could change. So what you must see is that it is the one mind, it is ancient, and it is impossible to change it. If you really see it, you will become free of the mind. It will no more trouble you. It will be there, but it will be working on its own. It will no more impinge on your consciousness. It will no more take charge. It will no more trouble you. It's like a stranger living in your house. It will be there working on its own. It won't bother you. Now, the next part of your question is, who is then in charge? Your consciousness is in charge. Conscious no, consciousness knows how to respond to different situations. Not the mind, but consciousness takes over. The mind generally reacts to situations. Consciousness responds. When the mind does something, it will go back and think, did it do the right thing or the wrong thing? When consciousness responds, you do not go back and think whether it was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. Whatever consciousness does, it is perfect. It will take over. And there will be no problems at all when consciousness functions. When the mind functions, the mind being divisive, it creates problems. We will go into it up to this point. Next time in the next Skype, we will go deeper into it. Please translate. Bom, uh, nós precisamos perceber que a mente, uh, não existe a minha mente ou a sua mente ou a mente de alguém ou a mente de uma outra pessoa, mas que existe apenas a mente da humanidade. E é isso que existe, a mente da humanidade, que é um fluxo contínuo de pensamentos, que flui do passado, uh, está aqui no presente e vai fluir para o futuro. A 
A partir da hora que nós percebemos isso, percebemos também que a mente ela é muito antiga e, por ser muito antiga, uh, a mesma coisa que os homens de milhares de anos atrás sentiam, nós sentimos hoje. Uh, o mesmo medo que os homens do passado sentiam, nós sentimos hoje. Uh, o homem do passado sentia medo de um leão, de um animal selvagem, de um tigre. E o homem de hoje, ele sente medo do mercado, da crise ou de qualquer outra situação que nos aflige. Uh, da mesma forma, o, o desejo está também na mente. Ou seja, você não pode, é, se você, e a mente tem qualidades, essas qualidades são, por exemplo, ele dá o exemplo da qualidade do sal, o sal é o sal, o açúcar é o açúcar, e não dá para nós alterarmos as qualidades do sal, nem as qualidades do açúcar. Da mesma forma, a mente humana, ela é desta forma, como ela foi desenhada pela natureza, como ela foi desenhada de acordo com a mente humana. A mente não pode ser alterada. É isso que precisamos perceber. Se no futuro houver uma alteração na, na forma como o cérebro humano é desenhado, a, a, a mente poderá se alterar, mas apenas desta forma. Portanto, o que nós precisamos compreender é que existe apenas uma mente, que é a mente antiga, que é a mesma mente em toda a humanidade. Se você consegue ver esta realidade, você conseguirá se libertar uh, da mente. Uh, com relação a uma, à segunda parte da nossa pergunta... Uh, a consciência está no controle. Ou seja, não é a mente que está no controle, mas é a consciência que está no controle. A mente humana, a mente da humanidade, ela reage e a consciência responde. Uh, qualquer coisa que a, que a consciência responda é perfeita e está ok porque esta é a qualidade da consciência. Uh, por enquanto, é nesse ponto que ele vai parar. Num próximo, numa próxima conferência pelo Skype, nós, então, uh, poderemos ir mais prof pro profundamente nesta questão. Please continue. Shall we move on to the next question? Yes, please. To what extent does the state of consciousness affect the power of our diksha? If we are, for example, with some suffering, is that going to affect the transmission of diksha and its flow? You personally told us about your great hope for this Brazilian collective awakening. How can you help us, the diksha givers of Brazil, to accelerate our awakening? We would like to ask you for the Diksha, to all uh, Brazilian Diksha givers for 21 days, to help our collective awakening. Can you, can this help us to awaken us immediately? Up to a certain point, no matter what your suffering is, it will not affect the Diksha. That is, your negative condition your suffering will not affect your act of giving the diksha. For example, diksha for health, diksha for wealth, diksha for relationship, all this will not be affected even though you are suffering and you are having a problem. But if you want to bring about transformation in the person, if you want the person to move into a higher state of consciousness, if you want the person to discover love, or great love in relationship. 
if you want those things then you must be in a higher state yourself you must see who you are you must accept who you are you must love yourself as you are if you can do all these things then your diksha becomes very very powerful then you can raise the other person's level of consciousness so for raising levels of consciousness you must be in a very good state otherwise your diksha will not work but for merely helping a person to become healthy to solve some financial problem to solve some relationship problem or some other problem the diksha will work even though you are not in a good state so that is how you must do it <clears throat> now if you want to be awakened in the next 21 days full awakening is not possible in the next 21 days that we have to wait for a longer time you have to interact more and get closer to 2012 but certainly you can grow on the path of awakening you can certainly be in a better state after 21 days so i will keep giving you blessings for the next 21 days if you want to for all the diksha givers in brazil so along with it you must practice inner integrity so one is the blessing from my side and the other is you are practicing inner integrity if you do that after the next 21 days you will be in a very good state that is possible but full awakening will take a longer time that we have to do a lot more work and wait for 2012 please translate yes please não prof é bom a pergunta é, eu não, não conseguimos ouvir bem a pergunta eu não sei se não sei se alguém conseguiu anotar a pergunta aí não deu para escutar mas é, não, genericamente eu sei. É, não. É, genericamente sim, mas o escrito assim, tá, tudo bem. Bom, é, é, a pergunta tem a ver com o seguinte, é, se nós formos, é, com relação a, a, a Diksha, né, se a Diksha pode é, afetar, é, afetar ou melhorar o, o, o nosso estado de sofrimento e evitar né, que a gente e nos auxiliar a, a, a crescer e a nos livrarmos do sofrimento. Né? E a segunda parte é, tem a ver com o seguinte, nós pedimos por uma diksha para todos os diksha givers do Brasil por 21 dias, para que nós possamos uh, fazer uh, despertar, para nos despertarmos durante esses próximos 21 dias e pedimos a Bhagawan a que ele uh, nos dê essas dicas por os próximos 21 dias para que a gente possa crescer e despertar. Uh, a resposta dele, ah, e também na primeira parte, é se o nosso sofrimento afeta ou não a diksha que nós estamos transmitindo. Uh, ele responde que o sofrimento uh, não vai afetar a nossa diksha para assuntos meramente humanos. Portanto, se nós queremos dar, doar uma diksha para um problema de saúde ou para resolver algum problema uh, material do dia a dia, assuntos, uh, como ele mesmo coloca, me meramente do, uh, 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 coloquiais, pequenos do dia a dia para resolver um outro problema para uma prosperidade não, o nosso sofrimento não vai afetar essa diksha agora se nós, uh, através das nossas dikshas, nós queremos uh, auxiliar a quem está recebendo a crescer a descobrir o amor a descobrir a unidade a elevar o seu estado de consciência aí sim quem está transmitindo a diksha precisa estar, ele mesmo, num estado de consciência mais alto. Se a diksha é para influenciar na descoberta da unidade, na expansão da consciência, seja para o crescimento do, da consciência, uh, você tem que estar necessariamente num nível mais alto de consciência. Agora, novamente, para resolver problemas meramente do dia a dia, de saúde, etc., nesse caso, não precisa estar num alto nível de consciência 
basta realmente trans, transmitirmos a dicção. Né? Uh, com relação ao despertar, é, uh, não, se nós queremos é, realizar aí um processo pelos próximos 21 dias para despertarmos, ah, e, e, no que tange ao despertar da consciência, 21 dias não serão suficientes. É, mas é, nós vamos precisar de mais tempo para realizar esse despertar entre todos nós. 21 dias não serão suficientes. Mas, se nós quisermos crescer, sim, o crescimento é possível nesses próximos 21 dias, e ele vai estar... Uh, mandando, enviando dikshas para todos os diksha livres do Brasil, para que nós possamos crescer durante esse período. Uh, muito importante é que nesse período todos pratiquem a sadhana da integridade interior. E através apenas desse sadhana da, da integridade interior é que nós vamos realmente conseguir crescer. We can, we can move now, please. Yeah. Shall we now, the questions are over. Shall we now move into three minutes meditation? Não podemos agora realizar uma meditação. Bhagavan, eu só queria dizer que nós estamos aqui com seis novos Diksha Givers iniciados aqui no Brasil. Então eu queria apresentá-los para você e gostaria que você desse uma bênção especial para esses novos Diksha Givers. Vocês poderiam ficar de pé, por favor, vocês? Ou levantar as mãos, acho que levanta as mãos. Levantem as mãos, por favor. É... Ba Bhagavan. Uh, we are, uh, Marcos just would like to tell you that we have six new Diksha givers that were initiated uh, last uh, Thursday and uh, he is asking these people to raise their hands and we, he is asking for your blessings to these new Diksha givers that were initiated last Thursday here in Brasilia, Brazil. I will give them a very strong blessing now and they will become powerful blessing givers. I will do that now. So while they are meditating, I will also do that. Vai... So shall we start meditating now? Yes. Ele, okay. ele, nós vamos todos meditar. Enquanto estivermos meditando, ele vai, ele vai mandar enviar dicas especiais para vocês seis para que você, suas dicas sejam bastante poderosas. Vamos começar agora. E as please, Bhagawan.
love you all love you marco thank you E aí, o que vocês acharam? Ótimo. Fazer mais vezes, né? É, a ideia de, de Bhagavan, não sei, isso tudo pode mudar, que as coisas estão mudando tão rapidamente que não dá para a gente... Acho que não precisa não, né, do microfone? Não. 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 As coisas estão mudando tão rapidamente que a gente não pode nem dizer o que vai acontecer. Mas, num dos primeiros chatos que o Bhagavan deu, ele disse que ele faria isso uma vez por mês. Né? Que assim, uma vez por mês seria esse nível 3, que cada meditação dessa iria potencializar a nossa diction e, e ele ia sempre dar essas instruções então, para que a gente fosse preparando nossas perguntas né, a gente tem que mandar as perguntas, são três perguntas por cada vez que ele, que ele aparece então, serão perguntas e ele disse que as perguntas devem ser o mais genérica possível né, é, voltadas ao crescimento, voltadas ao, ao despertar da consciência da humanidade é, ou alguma questão fundamental de si próprio que pode ajudar os outros também. É né? uma coisa que pode ser comum a todas as pessoas. Então, eu pedi para que essas perguntas fossem feitas assim. É, aproveitar esse momento para fazer uma pergunta mais profunda. Né? Eu estou indo amanhã, estou viajando para a Índia, vou, a gente vai fazer um curso de, com os coordenadores do mundo, nós vamos ter com o Bhagavan fazer um curso. E eles vão nos, nos dar algumas instruções de como eles vão querer que se faça o, a, a, o curso de iniciação aqui no Brasil. Então, no, há uns, umas duas semanas atrás, ele, ele disse, olha, daqui a três dias vocês poderão iniciar pessoas aí no Brasil, então os instrutores já estão autorizados, vão fazer um ritual aqui na Índia, nós vamos fazer vários rituais aqui e eu vou mandar uma dica especial a vocês para que vocês possam iniciar pessoas aí. E aí a primeira pergunta que foi, não, meu Deus, o que nós vamos fazer? Né? Que curso que nós vamos dar? Não temos curso preparado nenhum e tal. 